All right, everyone, please find your seats and thank you for being here today. My name is Jeremy and I'm really excited to talk to you all about your future career choices. And I'm really looking forward to hearing what each of you has to say. I don't want this to be super formal, so let's just go around the room and have you all tell us your names and the type of work you want to get into. Yes, you there. Well, how do y'all? My name is Zach Metal, otherwise known as the Crank Cowboy. I am from Tomahawk, Wisconsin, the greatest town in the history of God's beautiful green flat earth. Really? You're from Wisconsin? You don't sound like you're from the Midwest. And you don't sound like you're from planet Earth there, buddy. You don't see me moaning about that, do you? Um, and what does that mean? You heard me. I see you darting your eyes around looking for a way to sneak up on me and start chewing on my beautiful brain. I got my eye on you, pencil neck. Right. And what is it that you want to do as a career, Zach? Well, the simplest way of putting it is, uh, I want to be a businessman. That's great. And what would your primary business dealings involve? Drugs? <clears throat> Sorry? What? <laughs> let's, uh, let's <laughs> move on. You there, in the cloak. Good evening. You may call me Agatha, though I must keep my real name a secret. As for my work of choice, I enjoy spending my time with the cold and dead, feeling their insides as I rip them from their corpse before I sew them back together to be used once again. Do I intimidate you? Uh, yeah, a little bit. So, you're looking to be something of a mortician? <laughs> of course not, ridiculous otherworldly creature. I want to become a teddy bear surgeon. First, I'm not an alien, so can we please stop with that before it gets out of hand? And secondly, what is a teddy bear surgeon? Children often find that after time... Their best friends are subject to wear and tear of life. And when the time comes that their favorite stuffed has become nothing more than a husk, they will bring them to me so that I may bring them back to this existence. Nothing brings me more joy than the happiness in a child's smile. <laughs> So conf <clears throat> that sounds like a uh, uh, great choice, Agatha. Uh, would you like to go next, sir? The name is Mason Thorne, former agent of the CIA. 37 years, thank you very much. I could snap your neck in 23 different ways without you even knowing I enter the room. Okay. That's quite impressive, Mason. It sounds like you don't even really need to be here with that on your resume. I don't. I choose to be here. I chose to leave the CIA not because I have an insatiable bloodlust and was being investigated for crimes against humanity, but because I don't play by anyone's rules. Not even my own. If you say so. So what is next in life then? What kind of work are you looking to get into? I want to be a professional water slide tester. A professional water slide tester. That is correct. I believe that with my credentials, I will have no problem securing employment. But on the off chance that I need to prove myself, I've been practicing. Listen to this. We... <laughs> I'm sorry, was that... <laughs> was that you pretending to be on a water slide? Was that not jovial enough for you? Not whimsical enough? Do you want to die? Whoa, whoa, all right, all right. Everything's cool here. That that sounded like a perfect fit for you. Uh, perfect fit. Uh, okay, Um. last but not least, you there with the... Wait, what's with the tiara? I am Princess Hasna of the Lost Kingdoms of Mirefall. I thank you for your cordial invitation, Sir Jeremy. I must say, this is a lovely office. Well, thank you, Lady Hasna. Finally, someone who is somewhat normal. I wouldn't <laughs> think that a woman of royalty would be interested in finding employment, but do tell, what are you looking to do for work? I am looking to form a musical group, interestingly enough. A metal band, if you will. 
Guess I spoke too soon. <laughs> Wait, metal band? I've got a metal band. I've actually been looking for members because no one has really shown any interest in joining due to what I assume is the amazingly brutal name I have for it. Pray tell, Sir Zach, what is your band's name? Cock breath. No, apologies. <laughs> Can you repeat that? Cock breath. How are you doing that with your voice? Yeah, this fucking happens every now and again, stupid fucking bullshit FCC. Those c**ks don't want me swearing and shit, so I can't say certain things like dick or pussy or fucking shit and dick pudding. <laughs> That's like two thirds of my fucking vocabulary. So you any good at screaming? Let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies. Oh hell yeah, you are in. We practice oh, every eighth day of the week, usually right after I binge for a few days and I'm on the come down. What is go? <laughs> Am I awake right now? Did I have a stroke? Okay, listen, all of you. All of these job choices are a bit insane, but I think I have an idea. I've been listening to this Cold Read podcast lately about voice acting, and based on today's, uh, happenings, I believe all of you would be suited to give it a shot. Are yeah. you kidding no. me? That sounds like a huge so. waste of you time. You small peepee. -pee. No, really, you all have very unique voices, and I really <laughs> think you can make something of yourselves. All right then, Mr. Alien Man, I'll look into it. This better not be part of your plan to abduct us all and experiment on our butts and whatever. I am not. <sighs> Just go over to twitch.tv forward slash Samudi every Sunday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for the live broadcast. Or you can find any of the past episodes pretty much anywhere you would normally find podcasts like Apple Music, Spotify, etc., etc. The hosts are pretty awesome, too. They're not professionals, but they provide really good insight into the world of voice acting. And if you ever have any questions about voice acting, you can email them at coldreadthepodcast at gmail.com. So, can we all agree to look into it and reconvene here next week to talk about it? One, oh, yeah, me. all right, yeah, yeah. Okay. Fine. Great. All right, all of you, be safe getting home. I gotta go stretch my third arm real, uh-oh. I knew it! He's an alien! Ah, oh, crap. Roll tape. <laughs> good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Wherever you are, whether you are live here watching us on YouTube or listening to us now, anywhere where you can find a podcast, welcome to the, the cold read uh, voice actors podcast. That intro was made by El Dorino. Oh my gosh. Most of the recording was done last night, I think, by most of us here, if yeah. not this morning. So you've been working on this for like... This, that I, took you a while. I, I wrote the script in a few hours, and then I just compiled everything today after I got all the, all the recordings and whatnot. So, oh my gosh, that was awesome. that was brilliant. <laughs> that was <Wow>. amazing. <laughs> and like Princess Ashley put in the chat, good. these intros are escalating, and it's crazy because <laughs> in like three weeks I gotta do one again. I have no idea what the hell I'm gonna do now. <laughs> um, but yeah, welcome everybody. I hope everybody's having a great day, good afternoon, or or whatever you're up to. Uh, we're going to first do our check-ins, so, so we're going to check in with the person that we do on the other side of the globe. Renara, how has your week been? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's the main theme for literally every week almost. Um, all right, I guess. I am coming to uh, like, oh, the, the taper end of a migraine, so if I'm a uh. little bit, uh, that's why. Um, I, like it, it's more the case of so many co projects are c at that last end stage now. It's like I'm just waiting for those little pieces, and then it's going to be boom, 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 boom. So I'm in a bit of a weird lull and mm. everything because everything started to. I've done my bit. I've done my editing part. I just need a few more things, and then everything's going to go off. So it's one of those weeks. But other than that, it's all good. <laughs> I'm just slightly in pain that's all oh i'm sorry i'm sorry to hear that it's always rough I, I'm... and i'm here i'm here <laughs> thank you for being She's here, out here. It. yeah ashley how about you how has your week been uh first oh, off Lord. is the car is the car back up and running were we okay car, the car is back up and running Excellent. um we went and started it when we went and got starbucks i'm like we're starting the car <laughs> <laughs> Um, but then, uh, no, uh, I moved. I have a bigger apartment. Everybody keeps saying this room looks the same, and it does. But the difference is the doors over here. Yeah, there's not two doors now behind me. Yeah. If you're if you're if you're a super Pashley fan, you would notice that it's there now. Mm -hmm. but anyway, sure. no, it's much bigger. I uh, Liddy is about 30, 40 feet away from me when he's working at seven a.m. Nice. and that makes me happy. You know, like 
because I, I don't want to hear that. Have you turned it on? Can you turn it off? Is it definitely plugged in? Is oh. it, it's plugged in. Can he's you in, retype your password? Yes, he's yeah. in tech support, isn't he? <laughs> Yep. Yeah, but he oh that was the other good news so he got he got accepted for his new job and uh that they're not going to be remote as of april which means he would have to be back in new jersey but um now it's been really good it's been really really good so you have you have a little time at least where y'all can be together and then things are going go yeah, to go hmm. back to long distance but now in addition hmm. to to the moving because you've had a very busy week you were also on a podcast i believe this week right oh god i did i did this podcast like i agreed to do it and i didn't want to cancel it but it was the night before my move and it was oh. a little chaotic because we were trying to figure out how we're going to get the keys and so brian kept coming in in the middle of the podcast and leaving so my my friend mikey perk had to like edit a bunch of stuff <laughs> <laughs> mikey is one of my oldest friends on the platform and he has this podcast called yo mikey yeah, and I, I was able to pretty much find it everywhere. So it was, it was very awesome. It was nice to hear you on there. It looks like he's been doing a lot of people from from uh, our, our areas, right? Community. Yeah, the Twitch community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very yep, cool. Yep. He's a good guy. Yeah. He's a good dude. So, El Dorino, how is that Death Stranding working out for you? Um, I am currently sitting on a cliffhanger, and I will be playing it pretty much immediately after this podcast <laughs> is done. So, um, yeah, I was, I was playing the other night, and... Uh, Meg got home like right as I got to that part and I was like guess I better just leave off here because I don't want to like get into something and then just you know be thinking about it so I just left it there but um no this week's uh this week's actually been pretty uh relaxed uh I submitted a few more auditions uh via cast and call club um I haven't heard back but there are characters I felt like I could do well so I was just like screw it yeah however uh a bit of good mm -hmm. news Moody knows this already though uh, is that uh, I found another thing that uh, it was a paid position or a paid uh, audition, and uh, I submitted my demo reel, which y'all heard last week, mm -hmm. and the guy messaged me almost immediately and said, I love the voices that you do. Your voice is pretty much exactly what I'm looking for. I'll send nice. you over the script to audition hey. for. Um, and so he sent that over to me. Uh, I won't get into the detail about of it, course. but the voice yeah, yeah. that he wanted to uh, have me do was uh, sim he wanted basically the uh, Charlie Sheen I interview with ABC News back in 2011, where he's talking about having tiger blood and <laughs> by winning, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They, they wanted that voice. So I did that voice, sent it Perfect. over to them, have yet to hear back, but. Uh, he offered me that part as well as a, well, not offered me, but asked me to audition for that part as well as another one, which I'm still waiting on. So if everything goes as expected and he actually does think that I'm exactly what he's looking for, I will have my first two paid uh, roles. Nice. Woo. Bravo. Nice. Congratulations. Glad to hear that. Yeah. And, and it's, yeah. it's so awesome because we, you know, you just put that demo tape together. You did it for last week's episode and you immediately used it and it worked out well. So I'm glad you got it's You got shortlisted and that's super awesome. So you, you made it past the initial stage. Now you're in the second one and hopefully everything works out and, and, and you get the parts and we get to hear more about it. Yeah, I'm hoping so. I mean, the, the project sounds really cool. Um, the other one that I have yet to uh, audition for uh, was another animation um and he had a bit of like uh, like pre-animation footage that he just kind of threw together quick mm -hmm. um and it was very similar to something like uh like archer or bob's burgers nice so, um so yeah so that one seemed really cool too and he was like yeah i'd like you to audition for this one at some point too he just he hasn't gotten back to me yet but looking forward to it really hoping mm -hmm. that uh it goes through and i'll have something to work on so super yeah, awesome that's, Otherwise, I haven't really done a whole lot this week except clean up around my house. That's important. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, yep, you you guys can't tell the mess in the background, but this camera can see it. The, the one that they, I've, I've got, I still have mess over here that I'm working on in the room. So, <laughs> oh God, don't get me started. The camera I doesn't hate... pick it up. It's not there. <laughs> <laughs> I hate messes. Like I, I can't. I, I'm like, oh, it has to be cleaned up, and it's funny because like Brian really doesn't care. <laughs> so it's an interesting dynamic and i'm like <laughs> can we pick up that can <laughs> i feel bad because i found that bob lost an eye and for those of you that don't know from my twitch i have a, a big step sloth that sits next to me uh, one of his eyes fell off i gotta figure out where it oh went oh my god <laughs> no. 
You psycho! Oh, I know, so right? I CIA on him? What did you do? I, 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 he just he was like that, so I have to fix that. Um, so better, as far as better give a call to Agatha. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, no. Exactly. Teddy bear surgeon. Awesome. Um. So as far as my week goes, I I mentioned last week I've been having some medical issues. And they're, they're still ongoing, unfortunately. I have some um, some head issues that are happening. Um. I wanted to record my stuff for Matt Man. Wasn't feeling up to it last week. For those of you that that's the gentlemen that we have for the second week um mm -hmm. we're mostly all uh, or three of us are in the project for that i'm hoping to get that to him this week um my, my you guys remember the purple um that we did the audition mm -hmm. for yeah. i was the narrator for that that role has changed it's changing into something else so we'll see what's going to happen there um they have another oh. part in mind for me so hopefully that'll start oh. moving next week so looking mm -hmm. forward to to moving on that um as well did some voices.com stuff got shortlisted for some stuff but it, and, and it's just like how it is. You set the auditions and you forget it. Because yeah. if you sit there and you obsess about it, you're going to drive yourself up the wall. It's yes. one of those sort of um, career paths where it goes, woo! Mm -hmm. Literally, because like, you'll have right. one week where everything seems to be going amazingly well and you've got all these other things. Then you'll have a week of, oh my God, I have 101 things to do. And then you've got a week of, Nothing really is happening. I'm doing my auditions. <laughs> everything's fine. Then all of a sudden, no oh God, and it kind of happens right. like that in a way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah it's, it's one thing to be mindful of is, is as you're putting stuff out there, all of a sudden, all of it may come back at you. So one mm -hmm. thing to keep in mind there. So keeping track of how many auditions you're doing a week so that you don't end up having in case the, the, the dream is we have people wanting us wanting our voices for every project under the sun and all that jazz right but it is important to remember what you've auditioned for when and like just to keep track of how many you've done per week right. yeah. so that you can either then so then you can go through and go right i haven't heard from these three i can put them i can ignore them but i've still got these ones that i've done uh it's a little bit like how you test for covid sorry <laughs> <But> yeah, <laughs> <not much>. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, because I, I do that. I'm doing that at the moment at school. Right. So, um, but yeah, keep an eye on how many you've done and whether or not within a certain time frame you've heard from someone. If you haven't, move on. And I'd say that's just a, a, a tip. If we're doing tips today, that's a tip. <laughs> and that's really the perfect segue. So we are, this week's topic <laughs> that we're talking about is, is general tips. I mean, at this point, we've talked about the equipment that you want, where to go, how to practice, um, how to get your demo tape together once you get everything up and rolling. Uh, but today, let's talk about more general audition tips or general tips when it comes to how how to promote yourself and, and, and such. So uh, who wants to be our volunteer today? I've already said something. <laughs> <laughs> I've done my bit first. <laughs> well, then that would mean that our friend Pashley over here is going to be next. <laughs> I was the first. I was the first to laugh. <laughs> so I think the key to anything is having it be thought and stress free before you do it. And I say preparation is is king. And I'm coming from a live audition background rather than like a recorded and send it. Mm -hmm. But I think the same still applies. You want to be in the right mode when you're recording. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that means you got to pull out a karaoke track of let the body sit the floor and scream that and then go do your audition Then you know, do it. But for me, whenever I was like, I had this may not be relevant. Maybe it will be, but there was a certain clothing and hair routine that I had when I was auditioning for stuff for mm -hmm. operas for, you know, um, <clears throat> that was hugely important and kind of like practicing in that, in that state, you know, the way I would my audition again, I can't, maybe you guys can riff off me with this, but like, oh, yeah. you, I get exactly what you're saying. <laughs> so it's hard to say. Um, Cause, uh, um, I think it's important that also to have it planned and set aside time mm -hmm. so right. that you can mentally prep yourself. Like I'm going to do this Saturday or, and then if you, you, you'll roughly get an idea for how, as you keep going, you'll get an idea for how long it you personally take to record. However, like, certain types of projects after you've done them for a while mm -hmm. you get a sense of how much time you take up so you get a sense of right do i need to set aside two hours a day or sort of set them in so that then you can either a mentally prep yourself to do them at that point or if you then go like a few days after like before going i have a feeling i'm not going to be able to do it then so where can i then slot it next to it and it's all that sort of pre thought mm -hmm. and planning just so that it doesn't get lost in the ether of life 
<laughs> no, because yeah. life will throw curveballs and spanners in the works, and so it mm-hmm. helps to plan and keep a a, a jot down mm-hmm. as to what you're doing when. I've got a post-it note on my um the bottom end of my computer going Monday I do this and this, or I I will edit it and keep it blank depending on what I'm doing when. So if I because I've I've um got my last round of retakes for Skywind now. I've only got about fifty eight to do out of the thousands of lines i really did mm-hmm. um oh, wow. so i'm i'm on the final stretch of that so i'm putting that slotting that in to do like a couple of hours on a friday if i can around the mm. other projects i've got that are taking primary space at the moment sort of thing yeah and as you continue to uh work on recording lines you start becoming familiar with what tones you're good at, um, what inflections you like to use, you know, stuff that makes you you. Um, and then you can start trimming the amount of time that you actually take to record lines uh, from, you know, you, you might take a few hours to record a set of 50 lines, and then you can shrink that down to less than an hour. For instance, mm-hmm. when I first started and I was just doing general auditions, I would sit there for hours mm-hmm. and just trying to make sure I get each line done the way I think it should be done. Um, now, I as soon as I look over the lines, I immediately start thinking, here's how I want to deliver it. Mm. And then once I get in the booth, I can do it within like the first or third try, you know, somewhere in between there. So it doesn't take as long. You don't have to keep redoing the same lines over and over and over. So that really helps with time management as well. For sure. I 100% agree. It, it, I mean, you don't want to go into the booth thinking like, I need to go pick up the dry cleaning. I need to. I need to wash yeah. the dishes. I right. need to because that'll put you, that'll throw you off. Hey, Burnham. Uh, Burnham. Burnham Wolf just came in. But if you guys remember from last week, Burnham's the guy that that said that we've inspired him to to do some auditioning. So hello, welcome. Hey. Yes. Nice to see you live. Hello. Uh, but yeah, you don't want to go into the booth with all of these things in the back of your head. You want to try to be as as free as you can. And, and I'm with El Dorino. Sometimes it takes me a little time to get into the groove. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, right. Especially right now, I fall in way behind. I used to be really caught up on Voices.com. But they will hit you with like 10 to 15 auditions a day. Uh, yeah. So you have to be really selective because you have to use your time uh, uh, very sparingly. Uh, so it's super important. Yes, be in the right headspace. Good, good tip. Thank you, Ashley. I found a good way to do that is um and it's the advice I give for actors working on my projects is that to because I'm working on audiobooks of the Throne of Glass series at the moment and I'm on the Assassin's Blade at the moment I'm on the third finishing the third no, the, the second novella of that and anytime uh, one of my actors is struggling with I just go reread that section put yourself into this the shoes of this character spend just about like an hour or two just being that character just even if it is sat in a mm-hmm. chair it's ju- just thinking about like oh and a, g- a good example would be okay if this situation happened to her how she how, what would her gut instinct reaction would be would it be, should be to groan would it be to say something would it be to, the small intonation small bits help lead to the bigger bits as you go down the line so i when i'm doing a character um like for elderino's um opening today um I sat and just sort of like, because when we were discussing what sort of voice, I then was like, oh, this is what I'm doing for Matt's thing. Um, maybe I could riff off that. And so I kind of just sat and remembered the character that Matt wanted me for. I sat and I just sort of pretended to be this countess in my while well, holding a glass of wine and just sitting and as I'm next to a dead corpse or something. I like just visualizing for a good like half an hour to an hour and then going for it. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, and that's it's exactly what I was looking for too. Like I, I was looking for that kind of like that you know goth oh, looking intimidating <laughs> uh, I love that type that character, fun. you know. Yeah. And so, let me tell no, you, I, you just you just really well. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I'm done. No, no, you, you just hit on another tip. It is just think of those little mannerisms that you can do in mm. the booth to help you. Hold that wine of glass. Yeah. Uh, True. Um, um yeah. make the that motions. Glass of wine. Yeah, yeah, that's a glass of wine. Yes, I, I obviously I can't speak today. Thank you so much, Pastor. Appreciate it. I do it. that again. I do that all the time. Well, and the, my thing is, in the internal monologue is normally in Spanish. So when I translate it, sometimes the words come out upside down. So, mm-hmm. uh, okay. yeah. I know how that feels. So, like, yeah, if okay. if you're if you're if you're recording a swing, don't be afraid to actually swing because that will yeah. change the way that you're that you're doing it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure. Right. I mean, there is like. 
there was another Skyrim mod called uh, Khajiit Will Follow uh, that I auditioned for a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and they wanted lines like that. They wanted like action sounds, like fighting. Uh, they wanted death noises, stuff like that. And that's exactly what I did. You know, one of them was very specific, saying that the character uh, usually was dual dual wielding daggers. And so I I put up my fist and was like, hey, 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 you know, nice. yeah, that's yeah. It. nice. Just just doing the actions, like as long as you're not moving around too much, where your clothing or any jewelry or anything that you have on you is going to start making noise, it'll be picked up. Feel free mm -hmm. to do that kind of stuff because it helps when you get into character. Or for instance, um, during the the death noises, I literally like took my fist and like put my hand against my abdomen and just kind of like. You know, put my mm -hmm. uh, my fist into my hand, um, just to you know knock the air out of myself a little bit, and then I was just, uh, uh, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just I've those tiny that. things. You did a Matthew so McConaughey much. thing. Like I, I keep thinking about that. Like thing you the, just when he's just this, sitting there, and just uh, it's like, um, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that was one thing, thing that I did. Walk. Yeah, I did but that for Tywin um, and stuff. So the best part like, about that was he just completely improv it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was nowhere in the script. And he just started doing this. Like, this is what I do to get ready. He's like, um. <laughs> Ren, you're about to say something. Sorry. Um, yeah, no, it's a, a, um, ripping off of um, Elderino's the whole impacts to help with, uh, being hit parts. Um, when I was doing, um, Skywind, cause I, I wear core, I used to wear corsets quite a lot. So I would, when I was, younger layer corsets upon corsets to protect my middle part so that whenever i was getting hit or whatever i would be able to hit myself with having protection there if you know what i mean mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um that was my initial way of doing that <laughs> i wouldn't recommend it now unless you know how to do it safely right, of course. Um, but it is a, if if you can impact yourself without hurting yourself i think it is a good idea but only do it safely <laughs> agreed 100 100 be, be safe you know method act i really hope matt did because matt man has done some foley for me for chapter five and i really hope he didn't do that because <laughs> <laughs> i think he's watching right now because i'm getting discord pings from him because he doesn't have twitch <laughs> oh shit <laughs> cold read the voice act the podcast twitch, is not condoning you hurting yourself for auditions thank you <laughs> <clears throat> So um, thank you. And see, bonus bonus tip right there from, from Renara. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, mm -hmm. I will also <laughs> note that when, when you, if you want to do winded or out of breath, don't be afraid to go take a lap and then come back and record it that way. That's a good idea. Yeah, because <laughs> that, that'll give you a really authentic uh, Maybe take. not in COVID, or at least don't let a police officer find you. <laughs> right. Wear your mask if you go outside. Wear your mask I if mean, you go outside really like if i ever personally want to sound like i'm out of breath just jumping up and down in place for about a minute to a minute and a half yeah, significantly do the trick. me out mm -hmm. yeah and or this is gonna sound ridiculous planking no is that is amazing. totally understandable Ashley, <laughs> planking yep. will what? tire you the fuck out real quick <laughs> yeah <it> will <laughs> so yeah, if you ever want to sound winded, just do some quick exercises for like a minute or two, burpees. come back, and you will sound great. Do you guys know what burpees well, are? Great, great. Yes, yeah. and I hate them. The bane of PE, I hated them. My shoulder Those. can't do that anymore, but yeah, I know I know exactly what you're talking about. I hated them. <laughs> um, <laughs> is that going to be a channel point redemption, Pashley? What, me going... <sighs> no, or... burpees. <laughs> I could, I could. <laughs> I think the key, maintaining like as regular an exercise schedule is is important to just like, I am personally and mentally, but just to kind of keep that clarity and the creativity going. Mm -hmm. You it know, not, I mean, you don't have to like look a certain way in voice acting. That's the beautiful thing right. about it. But you, it's something to deal with rejection, to deal with, um, you know, sometimes you're overwhelmed. Like I need to add it back in because I I am 20 times more overwhelmed than I normally am, you know? Mm -hmm. So the strategy is, I don't know. I don't know how you guys feel about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, your, your mental health as with every other performing art is incredibly important because it, yeah, some involve more physicality, but in this instance, it's more about maintaining your own health, not only yeah. physical with like your, your lungs or your breathing or whatnot, but 
just being in the right state of mind. Like if you're if you're sad all the time, you're going to be very limited in your performance and you're not going to be able to pull off the things that you want to pull off. So and obviously on that, I was just going to say on that, if, if you're feeling like you're having a mental, a bad mental health day and you know, you've got like auditions to do, don't do them. Don't no. do them. Because that's going to really, you like that added pressure is just going to make you feel worse. Mm -hmm. And I can, because I ended up going through a horrible spiral of doing auditions at 3 a.m. because I wouldn't sleep. Um, I had like, um, I'll be honest, I had very bad depression a few years ago. And it was it's 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 my audition, my auditioning and acting suffered for it. Um, yeah, it which does. is why I think also some some of Skywind has taken as long as it had, because I mean, everyone has their own struggles and everything. So luckily enough, I'm on a project that hasn't isn't time sensitive. And so it can take that long. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you're having, a, because sometimes in so, some weeks, you just won't be feeling it. You won't have the energy. Think life will have kicked you. And just you use that time to focus on you. And then right. once you're back into the right swing of things, then resume that plan that you had uh, going forward sort of thing. Right. Well, absolutely. Yeah. T take care of yourself mentally and physically for the sake of not only your longevity on this world, but as well as your own arts. Mm. Agreed. And, and I mean, that's exactly one of the reasons why I've, I haven't felt like uh, I, I'm, I'd be okay in there because it does, your, your auditions will reflect your headspace, your physical space, all of it. 100%. Um, and it's mm -hmm. very, you yeah. have to be very careful what you put out there because, and I've said this before, you can only make your first impression once. Um, yeah. So especially oh, if, oh, yeah. you, if you go into voices.com, you're going to see a lot of names repeat. And if you put mm -hmm. out bad stuff, they're going to remember you and they won't even listen to your audition. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You okay there, Pesh? Very true. I guess. She's having a moment. Yeah. Did, did <laughs> no, you kill your mic? My heart is having a moment. Yeah, I saw that. My mic had a moment. It went, Bruh. anyway, this cool. is the bad XLR cable. I'll have to swap it out. Oh, well, now you know. Uh, it's just what happens when you move. Throw it out. <laughs> oh, there exactly. we go. Yes. What's your tip? Uh oh yeah, I was supposed to be thinking of this, wasn't I? <laughs> you want me to go and give you time? Um, no, well, yeah, go ahead. Okay. I'll, I'll think of something. <laughs> I've got a couple of them, but I'll I'll go ahead and do the I think the biggest one and one of the reasons why I wanted to do something like this is networking. Networking is super yeah. super important when it comes to to voice acting. Uh, because you're going to get you're going to have your peer group and your peer levels um now, if, if for me, if if I know I need somebody with a with or a gruffer voice or everything else, I can go to El Dorino. I know if I need a good uh, um, voiceover person for a project, I'm gonna recommend Renara. If I need somebody who need, needs to do a lot of like uh, uh, voice processing and stuff, I'll probably start recommending Pashley. So you're mm -hmm. gonna build this little repertoire of of people, and you're gonna be part of that particular peer group. That'll make recommendations. So don't be afraid to network yourself. Don't be afraid to make friends, reach out. I mean, I, I think it was you, Ren, who, who reached out to me after we worked with Matt. Um, you gave well, me a recommendation. I, well, <laughs> basically, yeah. Well, I'm, I, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, so after we worked with Matt, I, hearing, just hearing what everyone, else, everyone can do, I just, I'm a person who likes to do kind acts for the sake of being kind. Mm -hmm. And so I thought I want to help people in this industry because I know how tough it can be. So on, I just, I decided of my own accord that I wanted to give you guys all recommendations because you were all really good on the project. And I wanted to reflect that with, even though I was only at the time, I only limitly like knew you guys. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to, to do something nice because <laughs> you guys are really good and i wanted to re have that reflected so i just thought i'm going to help in what small way i can because i am socially awkward so i found it difficult rather than <laughs> rather than to sort of like come to you guys i went this is my little way of doing it and from there it kind of grew so i would say for anyone who is probably a little anxious about networking because i know i definitely am still um if you can do small acts of kindness on your journey that will get picked up and then that will be your nice sort of way into talking with people mm -hmm. and then from there you'll network more and it will start to snowball because i've met more people with matt's current project that he's doing um and it kind of builds itself from there so if you start the foundations like uh, uh, as like solid and 
kind, I guess, is the word that I like to reuse constantly because this world doesn't have enough of it, in oh, my opinion. Yeah. And I, I'm just sort of like, I work with, I work with children, and the amount of days I see kids just sort of getting, feeling like they're not worth it, or they can't do something just because they can't do maths, or they can't do geography, or something, just because they can't do something. Like, I've got so many kids who are, I'm going on a tangent, but I'm right. going, because um, it, 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 it stems from the wanting to help, I think, and if everyone could do one act of kindness a day, I think the world would be a little bit better personally and that's how you open the ways of communication it's just yeah. you're, you're i've sent a message to, to people on on casting call club and said hey dude that was awesome good job uh and that generally tends to lead to other conversations and then people will reach out to me and, and go hey i got this project go can you check it out and that type of situation so this this is how you open these doors uh yeah. so it's important to build again this a foundation when, when you're starting out because you'll have this peer group that you can reach out to for advice or or that'll start recommending you and, and so on and so forth. So I would say networking is a good way. Mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Did I give you it enough time, Maldorino? Yeah. Yes. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I had two of them, actually. Oh, um, yeah. First thing, uh, obviously, when you're doing voice acting, you want to do it because it's, you're, you have fun with it, you know. But at the same time, it can it can be overwhelming really fast, especially when you're putting your heart and soul into something that you really are passionate about and you're just not getting anywhere. That happens. It happens with everything. Um, I used to play clarinet uh, for quite a long time. Um, I would pour my heart and soul into it, and sometimes things just wouldn't pay off. It's just the nature of the beast. So mm -hmm. don't ever feel overwhelmed by, you know, not not pushing yourself as far as you can. But uh, on that same tangent, do other things that make you happy. You know, yeah. uh, for me personally, I, I love singing. I love playing my guitar. I love playing video games. I like mm. hanging out with people, I like drinking beer. Like I just mm. surround yourself with stuff that makes you feel good as long as it's mm. legal. And <laughs> yeah, <scotch>. in your <laughs> area. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, I think people do get swept up in the grandiose nature of the business in the sense of, uh, like, right. like, like, like any sort of creative industry, there is this dream goal of where you like where everyone wants to be. But and then people start to forget, like the small things of you've got friends, you're doing really into you're having fun whilst you're doing it. And these small right. bits, it's the journey that it takes to get there is the important part rather than this end goal, because if you're just going for this end goal, and that's your happiness. Once you get there, what then? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What then? I have nothing to work for. Um, yeah. and, and I forgot where the hell I was going to go with this, but that's I'm fine. sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, good. Um, so on top of that as well, um, uh, this I learned uh, when, when it comes to like music, uh, especially uh, writing songs, is never be afraid to draw inspiration from other people. Uh, whether it be musicians, actors, voice actors, etc. Burnham, yes, that is my hot tip. <laughs> okay, of the day. so for those of you Drink listening beer. on podcast, here, here it is. <laughs> uh, Burnham just wrote, uh, El, wrote, wrote El Dorino told me to drink beer to succeed. Got it. Writes notes. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I, it was a few months ago that I saw this, but uh, people mention like, you know, when you're when you're writing songs and you're listening to other people for inspiration and you hear something and you're like, man, that is really cool. I'd like to use that. First off, identify what makes it unique or special to that person and then rip it off. Seriously, it's it, you just you can change it to make it your own thing. But there's nothing wrong with doing something that someone else oh, has 100%. already done as well. Mm -hmm. You know, like. I a lot of my uh, characters kind of were inspired by Jim Carrey's acting full, mm. like just the the absolute like highest highs and lowest lows and every bit in between mm -hmm. all comes directly from Jim Carrey's characters because he's just he's an all over the place kind of guy. And I love that. I think it's very unique and it's what makes him him. Obviously, I probably won't ever live up to the same level that Jim Carrey's at, but I like drawing inspiration from him. I like, you know, going, to, you'll, you'll notice it even in my speaking voice too, is like when I'm talking normally as if I, or as I am right now, my voice is, you know, pretty low pitched. 
But when I start getting excited, like uh, in the character, one of the characters that I played in the intro today, there's a lot of like really weird squeaks like there, Mm -hmm. um, you know, just to kind of emphasize certain words or certain tones or whatnot. So and that's something that I feel like I've drawn from other people or other actors uh, that I personally watched or heard of. So, again, don't be afraid to draw inspiration. Don't be afraid to rip people off. As long as you're going to make something that you are ripping off your own and you understand mm-hmm. why it is what it is. 100%. Yeah, it, it's like it's, you, you're trying to figure out, like, how to do what someone is doing, not what someone is doing exactly. Right. And, and it could be a homework, but change it slightly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Basically. Mm-hmm. No, it's good. I like it. I like it. And and a lot of the voices that I'm able to do are drawn off. My crazy voices is inspired from, from uh, Mark Hamill's Joker. I mean, it's, it's still a deviation from it, but I'm still trying to be able to make it my own because there is already a Mark Hamill in the world and I'm never going to be able to fill that role. Um, Mm. But you start twisting it and trying to make it your own and then you might be able to find something. Right. And through Um, imitating and through trying things out, you might discover that you could make a completely different sound that you didn't even know you could make. Mm-hmm. So you could just like experiment, but I think Pash, you'd be able to comment more on don't overdo it because you could throw your voice. <laughs> well, like, well, yeah, I mean, there's the consequences to that too. Like, mm. you know, if you're trying to do a voice, then y- your character gets lost in a way. So there's, mm. there's multiple reasons for that. Mm-hmm. So, well, and let's segment that that right into a a, a, a tip. If if you're going to try out for something, make sure it's a voice that you can do for hours at a time. Because if yeah. you run out of steam five minutes after you started, after you've been cast, you're going to be in trouble, and you may mm-hmm. lose that role because of it. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah, if you if you ruin your your voice, you know, trying to do something that you want to imitate or whatnot. Yeah, it's just going to go nowhere. And I'm actually glad you mentioned that because I have a good example. Um, So uh, for those who ever watch Adult Swim, there was a cartoon, an adult cartoon called Metalocalypse about the world's biggest entertainment act being a death metal band. Um, The lead vocalist of that band talks in a very gravelly and like, I don't know, deep voice. Um... And I really like doing that voice. I love doing the, you know, more gravelly, raspy voices. Um, So I kind of started employing a voice similar to that with one of my role play characters who was a Vietnam vet, uh, Mm -hmm. which was also Mm -hmm. featured in my in my demo reel. Um, When I was doing role play initially and I was doing that voice, I couldn't do it for more than 10 minutes because I just my I didn't have the the strength in my voice to keep up the the low speaking voice, you know, and, and just oh, keeping that gravel going. Mm-hmm. Um, it's something that I had to work on. It's something that I had to change around a lot in order to mm-hmm. figure out where I wanted it to be so that I could do it comfortably and for a long period of time. And now, like now I don't really have a problem with it. So if you ever find a voice that you really want to you know, do that you think would be good for your repertoire, keep practicing it it will eventually lead you to something <laughs> call me tiny says clearly also um, I, I love burnham's quote good artist copy great honors artist steal uh quoted by true. me and nobody else <laughs> i would also say as well if you're on a project for a long period of time and there's a set voice that you need to do i would do because i learned this the hard the 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 by doing mistakes um uh, do a small audio clip so that you can, so that you're not having to just sort of check back on your, all of your recordings because you might slip and not realize it. So, like, do a small recording of maybe one line that you're doing with and the voice that you're doing. Save that for later. Mm-hmm. And then, because with my Elder Scrolls stuff, I started talking very low and slowly it started to come back to my normal speaking range. And now I'm kind of going, oh God, I need to pull it back down. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it would be a thing of if you are on a large project, if you have a set voice that isn't as natural as your as some of your other repertoires, stuff in it even. Um, yeah, small clip to remind yourself of how you're supposed to sound and move on from there. Because if you're doing several sessions, you can lose how right. you're supposed to sound. Yeah, 100%. It's- I, 
I even did that uh, last week when I was recording mm. something. Um, I simply I, I started off with a low voice, and then as I went on, I kept realizing that my voice was getting higher and higher, and I'm like, "Yeah, well, crap." So <laughs> no. I, I had to go back and just basically redo everything, you know, mm. but move my voice down a little bit. Mm. And that's I guess that... if you're doing sorry, no, no, go ahead. I was gonna say I guess if you're doing like several several characters like if you're like doing a set chunk of NPCs or whatever, I, I guess it could slide more so than if you're just doing one character for a long period of time, because then they can slot certain sections in where and everywhere. But I was just sort of that popped into my head. So I thought I'd say it. <laughs> no, and it's good. And you know what? Most people, when they, when they start doing an imitation, because there is mm. in the industry, something called voice matching. So uh, mm. if, if Orlando Bloom does a movie and they want to do a video game, they don't always get Orlando Bloom because he's expensive. And they'll find yeah. somebody to do a voice match. Um, mm -hmm. And generally people, when they start doing a voice match, is they take a phrase or a word uh, and then try to imitate mm -hmm. it as best as they can and then build mm -hmm. off of that. So it's the same concept. Mm -hmm. right. Sure. Do you guys do vocal warm-ups before you start? So say you have to go in for two hours? Not this normally. It's usually, usually, or at least I should. <laughs> it, it, it really depends on how far I'm stretching my voice. If I plan mm. on just doing a lot of my natural speaking voice, um, as long as I've been talking, like uh, I'll usually do uh, recordings or auditions after I work. Um, mm. And I speak a good portion of the day if it's a you know normal day. So... I usually don't need to go do any warm ups, but mm. if I know I have something that I'm going to be, you know, yelling a lot for, or I'm going to be doing some kind of like harsher vocals or something like that, I will yeah. do. I will. I'll. I'll just do some singing. To be honest, I'll just yeah, sing a song yeah. that I know really well, and I, I don't care if it's perfect or whatnot. But just something to get my my throat warmed up mm. enough so that I know that drink when water. Yes, Always drink water. water. Obey your messiah. <laughs> so, but it is important to bring at least a bottle of water or something. If you're going to a session or if you're doing a session, mm -hmm. make sure to have a water on you. Just have water. Because <laughs> right. you time will go and you won't realize it. And then you just, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Pat. I'm going to stop talking now. Oh, I was just going to say, like, th there's, I'm going to throw some terminology at you guys, but when you're yeah. warming up, it's really important to do, to start with exercises that are, that involve semi occlusion in your vocal folds. So that means that they're not coming together quite all the way. Mm -hmm. So it's not okay, a good wear and tear. Yeah. 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 Because they do this action. Mm hmm. That's what it looks like. Um, and at a very, very high C, this is just to give some perspective, um, the, the vocal folds are making contact a thousand times a second. Dude. Yikes. So, but I mean, nobody present except for me would be singing at that, at that pitch, right? But it, it's just perspective. There's so much collision happening. And mm -hmm. just like any kind of um, athlete, I think, you know, starting off with like a lip trill, like a... Yeah. watching that in the camera because the camera's only capturing like <laughs> no well, i heard it no, I, watch I, this again no no but watch my lips it's only capturing like a, a slow part of the action ready mm -hmm. oh my god yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you that are watching hopefully on youtube or here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how it's so sad. that's how stroboscopy works when they go and look at your um say you have vocal fold dysfunction or of, of some sort they do they um they do an endo endoscopy and then they they shine a, a, a they do a strobe which is like a blip, blip, blip. It's, mm -hmm. you know because um, they, then they can see if they start so otherwise it's imperceptible to the to the to the eye or they could just be using a regular camera like because it's only <laughs> I just noticed that now watching and I'm like, is, is this the big 4k cam or is this the webcam? It's a big 4k cam. Oh yeah. So this is, this is partially yeah. HD, HD, HD 4k, which I don't know if, if discord even, uh, takes advantage of those settings, but it's, it's clearer than my C922. So, HD. um, <laughs> but the, another one is like the, 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 um, the, the humming kind of at the bottom of your voice, mm -hmm. like, the, like on, on an M really, sure. really helps just get, get it warm. And you're not using your voice so much 
you know so right. but at the end of the day whatever makes you happy and gets gets the juices flowing is what you should do but it's something to think about Mm-hmm. And that's that's what I contribute to this podcast. No, oh, yeah, thank you. And this is exactly yeah. This nice. is great information. I appreciate that. For those Hell of you yeah. that one one thing I will say, if you can take classes, because classes is a great way to keep keep yourself learning and, and everything going, read books. There's a lot of good books out there. I just went through one called um, Voice Over Voice Actor. Um, mm-hmm. The the ex, and there's an extended edition on on audiobook, of course. Um, it talks about warm ups and talks about a lot of things that we talk about here. It's a great thing just to pick up and listen to, or what the hell's going on in chat? <laughs> I, I actually have no idea. <laughs> so, um, something to consider is, is it, cause I mean, you want, you want to always keep growing yourself in one way or another. So classes are great, but if you don't have time for the classes, read, uh, uh hmm. and start looking around and, and, and you will, you will expand and you will grow. Going back to, to the water messiah joke and that Renara said water. Water is super important because water will keep you. And, and if you guys were, were listening, is I tweeted about the, the lip smacking that was happening during the inauguration. That was driving me absolutely <laughs> up the wall the whole time. Woo! English. Don't know too much about it. Didn't watch it. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's perfectly fine. But what was happening, there's a lot of people there as they were talking. Oh. And it was driving me up the wall. That would drive me up a fucking wall. Into this and then not watching the video because they're just going to hear Zamudi going. (laughs) (laughs) Right. And water, water will keep you hydrated. So never, and and it'll keep you from doing that. Never pass on water. If somebody offers you water, drink water and always have water on you. And that'll stop you from doing that. If you're in the booth and you're starting to record and you can't get it to go away, a green Mm -hmm. apple if just bite into the green uh-huh. apple and the acid itself will cause everything to like completely just start watering and, and it'll go away or a green Jolly Rancher will do it too. Oh, why you got to imagine candy? I love Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> so something That's to keep in mind. The apple bit. Cool. I wouldn't think that, uh, that candy would do that to be honest. Like it's I, the I sourness. It's more about the acidity. It's the sourness. The yeah. And but plus, you the sugar in there would cause more yeah. saliva to be. Don't have chocolate. Don't no, have chocolate. chocolate that would be yeah. the worst. The worst. Or milk. Worst one. Right. I personally, uh, I personally use uh, apple cider vinegar. I mm-hmm. uh, just simply swish that in my mouth for like ten seconds and then spit it out, and it works miraculously. I believe there's something called Gollum juice. The gentleman that was doing the voice for Gollum. Andy Serkis. Yeah. Andy Serkis. It was um oh it was it was lemon it was lemon juice a buttload of honey and I th- it was like basically lemon juice and honey I think that he would gargle and swat and have just to lubricate his vocal cords to do the golem oh. voice. Mm-hmm. And, so um, to be yeah. clear, like honey, no- nothing makes contact with their vocal folds because that <laughs> would be dangerous. Yeah. Right. But and I actually have to make kind of like a biological case here, like mm-hmm. it, the maintenance of of water. Like, I mean, obviously there's the, the contact with your, your, your saliva and everything. Um, but to have a good recovery routine, like I try to drink throw coat before bed. I haven't been regular with it because moving and whatever. Um, but, and, and staying hydrated constantly, even the day before, you know, that's, that's even more important than like binge drinking, you know, through a fire hose while you're. Right. No, and, and it's actually yeah. bad for you to over drink when you're in there because it's it's all, you mm. want your body just to be hydrated. You can't mm-hmm. overdo it once you're in there. But if if your mouth goes completely dry, then you're in trouble because yeah. the mic will pick that up immediately. So right, yeah. slip, look for teas with like slippery elm, and it so slippery elm is is a really really good um, herb support. I we can't make any medical claims here about this. No, no, whole, not at all. Yeah, no. nope. that's illegal. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I have found that it has helped me through, you know, back when I was really, really going at Twitch things hard. Um, throw coat was really, really, really helpful. But again, getting things warm, honey is very, very helpful. But again, it's not like immediate. Right. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> if you're in trouble and you're in the booth, consider the green apple trick. The green apple trick is actually yeah. fairly, it's a universal one. So something. Uh, oh, and it's also very healthy for you. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Better than a Jolly yeah. Rancher. <laughs> An apple a day keeps the, I don't oh, know. Away. Mm-hmm. 
Brian. Oh, oh, Brian bringing in the water. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Freaking awesome. Um, any last minutes before we start our outro? Any last tips anybody wants to talk about? Never give up. Never give up. I will say it every week. <laughs> every week. Up. Even if you're feeling like everything's the world is the world is falling to pieces, don't give up. Keep going one step at a time. Never give up. Yes. <laughs> And do, and keep doing the things that make you happy. So, yep. so and don't put all your ducks in in a in the, in the voice acting basket or your eggs in the voice acting basket, because you will get pressurized and then everything will tank. You're like, I need to pay my bill, so I gotta get this. And no, once once it's, you're it's not gonna, gonna get go. rich. Yeah, you're not gonna yeah. get rich off this profession. It's it's the top point oh one percent that actually are able to do it. Do it for the fun. Do it because yeah. you like it, and do it mm -hmm. because you have the passion for it. And, and just enjoy it. I mean, we all yep. still have our nine to fives here, I'm sure. Yep. <laughs> uh, um, other than that, I, I do want to mention uh, for those of you, thank you so much for being here. But if you have a question, a topic, an audition, mm -hmm. something that you want us to listen to or talk about, cold read the podcast at gmail.com. Go ahead and talk to us. We'll be more than happy to listen to your stuff. We'll, we'll critique again. We are mostly still on the lower end of the professional level, but we will we can offer you advice. And, and yeah. again, you start building that repertoire and you start building those contacts, so it's always good. Oh, can I quickly throw something very go, quickly go, go, out go, go, there? Go. Because I'm nearly finishing with my uh, the Assassin and the Healer, I will actually be auditioning for or put rolling out a casting call for my, for the Assassin and uh, the Desert. I think it's called. I can't remember entirely. So if anyone is interested in that, look out for C on CCC at some point in the next couple of months because that'll be out there for people. Woo! Cool. Woo! That would be awesome. So uh, there are male and female roles I think available. There's one female role, several male roles. So I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> Nice to people. Very cool. Uh, so thank you so much for being here, either in person or on YouTube or listening to us in anywhere that you can get your podcasts. Hurry up by Heart Radio. We're ready to get approved. Uh, <laughs> but again, this has been great. This has been grand. So thank you, everybody. Have a great week. Put yourself out there. Do those auditions. Anybody else? Yeah. Any Have fun. Drink your water. Drink have your fun. water. Drink it. <laughs> Obey the water. Look Messiah. after yourself and have fun. <laughs> this is not vodka. This is actual water. Um, I'm hoping. And be kind to yourself. Be good to yourself. Absolutely. We will be doing. Uh, I want to talk about the imposter syndrome next week. So let's. Yes. This will. Yes. This is a big topic. This is something that give us time to think about. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully, we can figure out how to how to roll that all in. Who's taking the intro next week? I'm Okay. I'm doing it. Ren, doing Ren, it. you're in. Thank you so much. <laughs> I've set myself up now. All right, okay. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for being here. We will see you next time. And that is a wrap. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.